In this video, we're going to explore a different way to fracture our objects in Houdini. Up until now, we've been using the Voronoi Fracture with uh, scatter points. Uh, but now what I want to do is I actually want to showcase how we can actually create a pretty cool fracture uh, that has a little bit more detail in it with some nodes that were introduced um, several generations of Houtini uh, ago. But I decided to show you guys how to do Varni fractures first because if you understand how fractures work, when we start playing around with RBD material fractures and some of the nodes that come with it, they're going to be pretty intuitive and they're going to make a lot of sense since you already know how to use Varni fracture. So. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Uh, I'm gonna just start afresh here. So we'll just go a geometry and uh, we'll just call this wall and let's dive in. And create a box. Let's go ahead and throw that match size on uh, below so that we can pin this to the origin. So I'll set this to min, min. And uh, let's just go ahead and we're gonna create a smaller wall than we normally do. So I'd say three, let's do two and I'll say point one. Uh, I think this is too small. Actually, let's do five, three, and I think this will work. Okay, cool. Uh, and let's go and repair this for fracture like we normally do. So I'm going to do an ISO offset. Throw that off to the side. Let's go ahead and go uni uh, 100 uniform sampling devs and then the scatter. For this demo, I'm not going to do that many uh, scatter points. We're just going to do, let's say, uh, we'll just start with 25 scattering points for right now. Actually, you know what? Let's do 50. Just a little bit more. There we go. And we're going to do a new node here called the RBD Material Fracture Node. This will be the first time that we use this on this channel, and uh, I want to look at this real quick. So uh, if you take a look right over here, you have your input, which is the geometry. I'll go ahead and wire that now. And then the next one, we actually have constraint geometry, which is pretty cool. Already gives us an advantage over the Voronoi fracture, because if you remember, the Voronoi fracture actually does not allow us to bring in constraint geometry. So we can do that right off the bat. I don't have any right now, but we can use that in the future. And then we can actually bring in proxy geometry. Um, we don't have any proxy geometry to use um, and I, I rarely use this at the beginning of the process, but there are times where I'll need to use proxy geometry. And then uh, we have this last one here, which is the extra Voronoi points. I'm going to wire that in. Before I cook this SOP, I'm going to come down here and I want to hit the input points. And what this is going to do is going to say, hey, let's take these points right here and use them. Now, disclaimer, these input points are only going to be usable uh, for concrete glass. For wood, um, you will not be able to use uh, input points. It has its own fracturing system using cuts, um, and we'll explore that in a different video. But once these are wired, let's go ahead and just uh, cook that sop. And it's going to take a few moments, uh, and that's why I want to do just a few points. You will notice that this will be considerably slower than the Voronoi fracture. But you can see this actually works like a Voronoi fracture. The difference though, and if I throw down an RBD exploded view here so we can see this, don't worry, we're not gonna render off of this, but we have some slight differences. Uh, and then these slight differences um, will be played out, and that's because we have parameter control here. So what do I mean by that? Let's come over here and take a look. If I come over here um, under the concrete, I have chipping and detail, and I can even add my constraints here. Whereas here, um, I can play with the constraints, but most of the constraints will be um, kind of intuitive, which is like a connect adjacent points inside the Voronoi fracture. So let's play with this real quick. Up here, you'll notice I have chipping. Just know as I cook uh, these, these are going to take time, but let's just go through them. So I'm just gonna enable chipping. And you'll see off the bat, we get these little chipped pieces. And if we play with the parameters down here, we can increase the amount of chipping that we get. So we'll say, hey, I wanna go 0.75 on the chipping. Yeah, we'll get more chips. Maybe I'll go 0.95. And uh, we're just getting more chips along uh, uh, all, all the way around, we can play with how they actually chip. If we come over here to the detail, we can put edge detail. Basically, this is just simple noise uh, that's being thrown on the edges, and you can see that. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off my proxy geometry so that we can see this better. Uh, and we're just adding detail within the interior uh, pieces of our fracture. So if we come over here, and uh, let's uh, go ahead and turn on the interior detail. We can play with the interior detail even more. And I'm not even gonna play with the settings. You can just see right now um, that they 
are adding quite a bit of a detail to our fracture. It makes it look pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, the constraints are right here. Uh, to see that, if you take a look, we can show the constraints. And uh, I will actually, um, actually, let's just do it this way. We'll do a null. So these are the constraints. And without having to add a con uh, connect adjacent pieces, or even honestly, we don't even have to add in a um, attribute uh, here to create the glue constraint. If I click on this and we go to our geometry spreadsheet, you'll see that by default, this is set to glue with a constraint tag already, which actually is something we don't haven't talked about yet on this channel. And uh, that's because it's being handled right here. And so by default, it wants to give you the glue constraints. For this video, we're just gonna go ahead and operate with the glue constraints. Um, in later videos in this series, we're gonna be talking about constraints in detail. We'll even talk about how to combine constraints because the ultimate goal of this video series is to destroy our own structures. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and destroy this wall real quick. So how to do that, um, we'll come back here, just view this. I'm gonna throw in an RBD configure node and I'll just pull this down. Let's go ahead and flag that. And this is where we'll add in some of the attributes that we have added in the past. Um, and that'll do it on both the proxy and the constraints and, and everything. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just turn on my active. We'll leave that at one. Uh, one thing that we can do is actually turn off the active and set a group here. So let's do this. Um, we may have to come back and refine that later, uh, but you'll see there's the group. And then um, the way, there's a couple ways to actually simulate. I can use the actual RBD bullet solver here, which we haven't talked about yet on this channel either. Uh, and I will be honest with you, this is not my preferred methodology to simulate, especially when I get to higher res sims. I like to have, be able to dive in and really play with the solver, um, which you can do here to be fair. Um, and, I, and there are occasions where I do that. And in another video, we'll examine the difference between the solvers. For this one, we'll just use one that we're familiar with and we'll use the dot net. Uh, and the way I'm actually going to do this is uh, I'm gonna do a couple of nulls here. So let's do a null and we'll pull this one out. We'll call this out geo high res out. We'll do another null. We'll call this out uh, wall constraint. And I'll do another null and we'll do this out geo low res. And uh, let's go ahead, actually, before I actually dive in, let's uh, let's create a collider. So um, let's come over here now back to the scene and I'm gonna create a sphere. Let me go ahead and just template this so I know the scale of my sphere. Let's go ahead and maybe shrink this down to 0.67. And then let's translate this uh, we'll go positive Z space, and then we'll go up here to, let's say, 1.5. There we have our ball. Um, and then what I will do is I will give this an attribute. So to do that, I'm going to do an attribute creates. And we'll do V for velocity. Uh, this will be a um, on a point. We're going to do a vector. And then let's go ahead and just do, I'm gonna probably have to do negative. So let's do negative 25 here, negative 25, like we have in the past. And let's do a null. I also wanna pack this actually before I forget. So let's pack. I'm gonna transfer the attributes. So if I do this right, click on this, you'll see that under my point attribute, I have velocity. And then we'll call this out projectile. Let's dive into our dot net and let's build our, let's build our tree. So the first thing I want to do is I want to do a rigid body solver. This is one we're going to be using. Let's throw in a merge and gravity. I also want to throw in my ground plane. So let's wire this, boom, boom, boom. Let that going, let's do an RBD packed object. And all this should be familiar if you've been keeping up with the series. So we'll come over here to the out geo low res. Um, I'm actually gonna simulate the low res and then we'll use the low res to animate our high res. And then I'll do a merge. And then I will do an RBD uh, packed object here. This will be the projectile. Uh, I want to inherit the velocity. Let's make sure it's going the right direction. So uh, let's just test that real quick. There we go. And it's already breaking through because I have no glue constraints. So let's add the glue constraints in now. So I'll do it right here just for this sim. 
Let's go ahead and wire in the SOP out wall constraints, and then we'll do a glue constraint relationship. And let's wire that in. And uh, if I hit play, uh, it's just going to go right into the wall. Uh, that's because by default, the RBD uh, material fractures glue constraints are actually pretty insane. So a strength of 10 is a lot. Let's lower this to 10. It might not be low enough, uh, but let's see what happens. Yeah. I usually have to lower this all the way down. So I'm actually gonna go up here to, let's say one back to the 10,000, let's go up a level. And then under the RBD material fracture, we go to constraints. This primary strength is just too high. So I lo usually lower this down to 10. I probably have to lower the interior down as well. So let's go 10. Not low enough, let's try it at one. And there we go. And you'll see that this is actually really, really strong of a glue constraint. Um, you can come down here and say 0.5. There we go. We're starting to get, um, maybe we'll try five. Starting to break. Do three. There we go. I like that way better. Okay. And so um, we just throw the ball at it and it starts to break with just enough force. Could probably give this ball a little bit more density, so let's go ahead and give it just a bit more density. And then under the glue constraint now, I can probably bring this back up to, let's say, uh, five, and it should break through. There we go. We'll probably lower the velocity down as well too here, so um, let's just come over here with this flag, and I can just submit from here. So we'll say, um, negative 15, negative 15, and there we go. And that's uh, the power of the RBD material fracture. And then to show you this trick, um, this is how I usually sim so I can get much faster sims. I'm gonna use a node here called the transform pieces node. I'm gonna throw in the output here um, to make this work properly. Um, we'll see if We'll just throw in the transform pieces there. Now it's gonna simulate the high res, and there you go. And that's the RBD material fracture. Let me know what you guys think. This is actually the way that I like to fracture my geometry. We're gonna be exploring how we can control this uh, in subsequent videos as we continue this series. I'm looking forward to releasing more videos here on this channel, so make sure you hit that bell icon. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like this video and let me know in the comments below what you guys want to learn in Houdini. And until next time, always be creating.